Hey everybody, welcome to the live stream. I am trying something a little different today. I am streaming to multiple platforms, so we're going to see how that works. Um, let's see what happens, okay? Shall we blow up the internet? Who knows? Welcome to the live stream. If you haven't joined me before, now's your chance. <laughs> I'm Tisa Blackbird and I am the Acrylic Diva and I stream twice on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays at 1210 and 410 Pacific. At 1210 we do traditional um, art supplies like watercolor, acrylic paint, markers, paper pens and all kinds of stuff and I'm all tangled up, hang on. And at 410 p.m. Pacific we do everything digital. So we're talking about iPads and pencils and Procreate and all kinds of stuff. So if you have not joined me before, make sure I'm going to put this scroll down beneath me. And I don't know why that's there. There. Um, put that scroll beneath me. That is my Amazon live page and that is where I'm primarily streaming from. You're going to you're going to hear me talk about products and things like that. And if you want to shop for those products, then you're going to want to jump over to that. Um, actually, no, that's not even the right stream. <laughs> I'll fix it. <laughs> I'll fix it in a minute. You're going to want to jump over to AcrylicDiva.live and that's where I am on Amazon. But, you know, if you're watching me on Facebook or YouTube, that's good too. That's fine also. Today I want to talk about core watercolor though. That, uh, that is what is our topic today and I'm going to show you some mixed media stuff with uh, core watercolor, uh, some acrylic paint pens, We'll do a little Sakura Pigma Micron drawing. We're going to use some watercolor tablets and stuff like that. So let's jump to the overhead camera and I will change the scroll so it does the right thing. As a matter of fact, I'll just turn it off because it's got the, I don't know why that keeps popping up, but let's make it go away. Go away. Um, <laughs> that's so weird. Why does that keep popping up? All kinds of weird stuff's popping up, you guys. Oh, look, there I am again. Okay. All right, well, we'll just leave the scroll there because for whatever reason, I can't make it go away. It won't go away. Um, that, however, though, if you are on the Amazon platform with me and you want to go to that location that's scrolling underneath me, that will give you the information on how to join a contest. I give something away every month and I haven't decided what I'm giving away this month yet. Maybe I'll give away a copy of my book. Maybe I'll give away a free class. Just get into that contest, join the contest, and then you can, you'll get something. You'll get stuff, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. All right, let's talk about core watercolor. And let's take a look at what's happening with core watercolor. Let me just grab the live feed so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, what you're looking at right here is a piece of Strathmore watercolor paper, uh, the 9 by 12, or excuse me, the 8 by 10 size. And I am just, hang on a quick second, you all. We've got, got, a, little, got a little hitch going here. Just want to make sure we are, in fact, looking at our live stream. Yeah, okay, we are. We are. Um, so let's talk about paper and watercolor and um, the, uh, you know, types of pigments and things like that. I'm going to jump over here and take a look at what's happening. Do you all have any questions? Make sure you put them in the chat box. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, give me a minute or two because I'm switching between platforms if you have questions. So just um, make sure you get them in there, okay? Okay, um, first things first, the watercolor that I am going to be talking about today is the core watercolor. Let's take a look at the new package here. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna pull this camera in just a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better there. So this is the Core Mini 
half pan set. I love this little set. It's super cute and it is very useful and it also works really well when it comes to travel or anything like that. Um, it's it's going to be amazing. You can just toss this in your purse or your backpack or your your weekend luggage and grab these artist tiles that I'm about to show you. One water brush or just a simple brush and a, and a glass of water and you're good to go. So the core watercolors are highlighted right now for you. And if you have questions about that, be sure you just um, let me know, okay? Uh, actually, they're on sale too. That's a really good price. So once again, if you're in Facebook, if you're on the Facebook page with me, um, I'm going to just put the uh, chat, I mean the chat, I can't even talk you guys. I'm going to put the uh, link right here. That's where I am right now. Go over there and you can see the Amazon page if you want to. And I'm also going to put that in the um, YouTube link for you if you're on YouTube. There we go. Okay, so everybody's linked up. You guys are all linked up. Everybody knows <laughs> where I am. <laughs> I can run, but I can't hide, right? So let's talk about this core mini set, this little um, super cute core half pen mini set. This is just adorable. Isn't it cute? Don't you love it? Um, now the nice thing about this is, of course it's core watercolor, and that is made by Golden Artist Colors and they use a new kind of binder so it's uh, got a very strong binder to it that doesn't yellow it is works just like traditional watercolor so you don't have to worry about you know it being odd or different or anything like that it works just like traditional watercolor inside the half pan mini set you've got first of all you've got a cute little picture there that shows you what it looks like inside and then when you open that up if I can get my fingers to work. Oh, also on the back, you've got all the colors here. And you have 12 colors. Let me just read you these colors real quick. Cad Yellow uh, Primrose, Nickel Azo Yellow, Iridescent Pyro Orange. This is such a beautiful color. My gosh, I love that Pyro Orange. Pyro Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, which I cannot live without. That is my color <laughs> i'm adopting that color dioxazine purple ultramarine blue phthalo blue green shade or no is it green shade yeah green shade then sap green transparent brown oxide burnt umber and Payne's gray now you may be wondering why there's no black in this set that's because you need to make your black and Payne's gray and a little bit of quin magenta will make you a gorgeous black you can make beautiful beautiful chromatic blacks with this set so you don't need to worry about not having a black in there and then of course when it comes to watercolor you don't need white because you're going to use the white of the paper but if you want to core has um, chinese white if you want to get an extra tube of white and add it into your set um, so let's take a look at the inside of this all right let's just pop that open and you've got the color chart for all of the colors that come in the core line okay there's I think 80 of them let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight yeah 83 right they also have the um, iridescent colors here so you've got some really really pretty iridescent little bit of bling if you want a little bit of bling okay all right, so that is your color chart. Now then comes the fun part. Look at this baby. Oh my gosh, look at this. You've got a piece of watercolor paper here. That's huge <laughs> because then you can take a little bit of color and match it to all of your, uh, all the colors that are in the half pan set. Because you know, sometimes in these darker colors, they look very similar when they're dry. So, you know, that way that will give you the option to um, you know have a little kind of a little cheat sheet there but the thing I love about this is this little pan um, little palette that is right there when you're working it's right there okay so this is what the new set looks like it's really pretty I'm keeping this one in pristine condition so I can show it to you all on the camera and it looks all beautiful but then this is what it looks like when you use it oh yeah <laughs> 
this is Tisa's set. <laughs> this is what my set looks like. And I have to tell you, I clean this little palette. I clean it, reuse it, clean it, reuse it, clean it, reuse it all the time. And it works great. I mean, it's so, it's, it's just way too easy. So there you go. That is such a wonderful little travel set. OMG, right? Um, and I, we're going to do some stuff with it here in a minute, but I want to just scoot through the carousel first. Um, do my Amazon commercial for you real quick and then we'll come we'll roll back and we'll do some watercolor on some of this really wonderful Strathmore artist tiles that I've got. Let's look at this speaking of Strathmore artist tiles let's look at the next thing in your carousel and that is the Strathmore artist tiles these little babies right here. This is the six by six size and these are super wonderful they are only glued on one edge, which if you have ever tried to get watercolor off the block and it's got it's glued on all four sides and you go through about two sheets that you tear before you get it to work properly, that is so frustrating. <laughs> so this one is only glued on one side. You leave it on the block while you're painting and then you take it off and it's just one glued on one side. I love that about this. And it's really nice paper. It is 140 pound. Uh, this one, this particular one is, I would call this, it's not really rough, but it's, it's cold press. So it's not like a bristle surface. It's not super smooth. It's got a little bit of texture. So we'll do some watercolor on that in just a minute. And then if you want to do mixed media stuff, what did I do with my, um, oh, here they are, okay. So if you want to do mixed media stuff, you will want these little Strathmore Artist tiles. This is the Bristol surface. It's a little bit different, and um, it has a smoother surface. So um, you can actually do things like pen and ink on this. You can see I've done a little watercolor um, this is in the black area here. This is the Artistro paint pens, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then these finer lines here, that's um, Sakura Pigma Micron. So these, these Bristol surfaces are good when you want to do a little bit more delicate line work. They're really good for that, okay? We'll do some stuff with those. I want to put my pretty watercolor set away though before I accidentally pick it up and use it. <laughs> I want to keep the messy one out. I'll keep the messy one out because I'll use that one. Okay, next up in your carousel, I'm just scrolling through the carousel and then we'll get back to doing some fun stuff. Next up is this Canson Mixed Media Pad. I'm going to come back out because I can't quite fit it under the camera. So let me get the camera back out a little bit. There we go. Um, this, is, this is the 7 by 10 inch one that I'm using here. And um, actually, they, they come in a bunch of different sizes. Let's, you know what? Let's take a look at this one on the um, on the Amazon page. Let's get this baby up on the Amazon page. There it is. You can see that. Um, I think you can even see that when you're over on YouTube. Let's see. Can you see that on YouTube? I think you guys can see. It. Yeah, yeah. You can see it on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook. Um, I think you guys can see me on Facebook. At least I thought you could. I was there a minute ago. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. Um, so here's the scoop. The mixed media, the Canson mixed media pads uh, come in a bunch of different sizes. We'll get back to the Amazon page. We were on Facebook there for a second. Um, the um, Canson mixed media pads come in a bunch of different sizes. This particular one is 7 by 10 inches. I like to get the little bit smaller so I can get it under my camera when I'm doing demos for you guys. Um, but the thing I like about these is there are 60 pages in the pad. You can do a lot of work in here. Look what I just did the other day. I Oh, oh you can't see it because I don't have the overhead camera on. How silly. This <laughs> I just did this with the middle school kids the other day. I do a middle school class with the the, the Martin Luther King kids up at the Bay, in the Bayview in San Francisco and I do an online class with them and we were doing letters 
We were looking at Sister Corita Kent, who is one of my favorite artists. Anyway, Sister Corita Kent, you can look her up. A um, lot of lettering and stuff, but this is on that Canson Mixed Media Pad. Now look at how well this paper takes this, all of this different stuff that I did to it. So first of all, it's got watercolor, then those are paint markers, then there's actual black paint, and check it out. Look at, you can see, um, you can see through to the back where the markers are, but that paper's not warped. It's not all wobbly and warped and weird, you know. There you go. That, I mean, I think that's a really good kind of paper to use, especially for mixed media stuff. Now, this is just, you know, paint, markers, and that kind of stuff. But it's going to hold up for collage, um, you know, pretty much anything you throw at it. The only thing I wouldn't um, throw at it would be oil paint. And, you know, when you're painting um, with oil paint on paper, the paper's going to leach the oil out of the, out of the paint and leave that halo. So if you're ever oil painting on paper, make sure you gesso it first, okay? That'll protect your paper, give you a nice surface to work on. Just throw some gesso down, let it dry, and then you can paint no oil on paper, no problem, okay? Okay. Next up, I've got the Strathmore Mixed Media Pad. And the difference between the Strathmore and the Canson is um, the Canson is a hundred and, oops, excuse me, that's not right. The Canson is 98 pounds, a uh, 98 pound paper. It is acid free and Canson, you know, I've been using Canson paper since I was, well, Strathmore too, since I was in college, you guys. And <laughs> I won't tell you how long that's been. However, <laughs> Canson's been making paper since 1557. That's over 500 years. That's impressive, right? So they probably know what they're doing. So the mixed media pad, this has got 60 pages in it. It's only 98 pounds. So it's a, you know, it's like a demo pad. It's a, you know, you can just work on it and stuff and not worry about it being expensive. The difference is the Strathmore mixed media pad is 184 grams, a uh, pound, excuse me. It's 184 pounds and it's more like a board than it is a pad of paper. So I'm gonna pull it up on the um, Amazon page for you. Let's take a look at it because it is a really good type of paper for you to work on. And like I said, I would almost call it a board because of the weight. And so it's glued once at the top and I'm gonna actually go back to the overhead camera to show you this. It's glued once at the top, you know, you leave the board down while you're working and then you pull it off. And so take a look here. I've got watercolor, markers, um, Pigma Micron pen. I've got all this stuff. There's no wobble. It's totally flat. And hear that? It's a board. It's more like a board. It has a bristle surface. So it's very smooth. It takes pen and ink beautifully. So that is the Strathmore mixed media pad. And whenever they say mixed media, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna be thinking about things like collage, acrylic paint, watercolor, pen and ink, um, markers, all that stuff. So you could really go crazy with this board. Or, well, it's called paper, but I think it's a board because it's got that heft to it. So that's the Strathmore Mixed Media board, quote, paper. Comes in a bunch of different sizes. Let's look at the Amazon page again. Oh, look at this, 9 by 12. Oh, this is just the 9 by 12 size, but you can get them in different packs. And you can get them 6 by 8, 11 by 14. They come in a bunch of different sizes. And as a little aside, my pal, Tracy Batista, did the cover art for this pad. You go, girl, Tracy Bautista. You can find her over on uh, Instagram, Amazon. I mean, Instagram. Yes, Instagram. Tracy Bautista, you can find her over there. Um, okay, so that's the scoop on the mixed media pad. Let's talk about these Sakura Pigma Micron pens that I go yammering on about all the time that I love so much. Let me grab some, and I'll grab my mixed media pad, and let's go to the overhead camera. So the um, Pigma Micron that's in your carousel right now, and by the way, Facebook people, 
By the way, Facebook people, if you are um, watching me on Facebook and you have a comment, just give me a minute because I'm switching between platforms. So get your comment in there if you have questions about any of these products. Get your comment in there and give me a couple of minutes to get back to it and I will definitely try to try to um, answer your questions, okay? Same with you YouTube folks. If you have questions, let me know, okay? Because that's my thing. I'm, I've, been a, I've been a working artist for, oh golly, four decades. Do, should I even admit that? <laughs> Anyway, I, I know stuff. So you guys ask me questions, okay? That's the, that's the short answer. All right, here we are in the overhead. And let's look at these Pigma Micron that are in your live stream, right? I mean, that are in your carousel. And if you're not on Amazon with me, jump over there and you can actually get these products right while I'm talking about them. Um, however, the Pigma Micron, I want to um, kind of show you, I think I've got a little page in the book here. Yes, I do. Look at that. I had that all ready for you. Isn't that clever of me? Um, all right. <laughs> Let's come in a little bit so you can see that. I want you to see the, um, the different line widths that we have with the Pigma. Now, this particular set that's in your carousel, this is the six pin set. And it comes with a 005, which is very, very thin, 0102, 03, 05, and 08. That is the different widths that are in that six pin set that's I'm showing on the Amazon live page right now. And then I also picked up a set of the colors, which are also really cool. You can get, and they come in a bunch of different sets, you know. You can get six of them, you can get 12 of them, you can get 48 of them, you can get as many as you want. And um, they come in a lot of different colors. The thing I like about these pens, though, is they are archival, they're acid-free, and they're waterproof. That is a very big deal when you're doing watercolor and you want to draw a little something and then you want to do a little wash over it. These are the ticket. They, in, in my humble opinion, these are the gold standard when it comes to working with pen and ink and watercolors. So here I'm going to get a new page. Here's a new page. Let's get my, which one do I want? I want the 08. I just like the 08. I should just buy a whole handful of the 08s because that's what I end up using all the time. I, I just like the thickness of this particular 08. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of cross hatching here. Nothing fancy. And you know, give that a minute or two, not even a minute, give it 30 seconds to dry. And then we will, um, oh, thank you, Jones, for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, give that a minute. And has it been a minute? See, it's dry already. All right, let me get a little water. Let's get a little paintbrush. A bit of water, get my um, my core watercolor set, the one that's all messy. <laughs> you can always tell if I'm using it because it's messy. Little Quin Magenta, let's put it over here in our palette. See, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? We love that, don't we? Yes, we do. So you can do wonderful little pen and ink drawings put a little bit of color down on top of them. And you know what? These would make great Christmas presents. Where is my little, I'm gonna show you one I did. Actually, I have a couple here. So, okay. So here's, a, here's just a little something, a little bit of watercolor, a little drawing in pen and ink with the Pigma Micron. And look how cute that is. That would make someone a lovely little Christmas present. Those are the Golden State frames that I've been using. Look at this baby, that doesn't even have color on it, you know? You could come back and put a little watercolor on that. And you know, somebody, grandma would love that. Can you imagine having the kids sit down, do a little watercolor and then draw, and then send it to grandma? She'd be over the moon. I know I would be. You know, I'm a grandmother, so you know, you wanna take care of Take care of grandma. 
<laughs> I say that. I say that and I mean it. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's a little bit about the Pigma Micron and how it takes the watercolor, which it does really well, I think. Don't you? Don't you think it does a good job? Yeah, it does. Okay. Alrighty, so you've got, we've, uh, we've gone through a few things here in our carousel. Let's look at these paint pens from Artistro. Am I crazy about these or what? The answer would be yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm kind of crazy about them. Um, have I said hello to everybody? Have I said hello to you all? I just jumped right in and started talking about art supplies. And you know, that's because I'm passionate about it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of loving this stuff. Um, the Artistro people, though, are super sweet. They sent me a whole bunch of, of markers and whatnot and said, here, see if you like these. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I kind of do. And then they said, well, do you want to talk about them on your Amazon live stream? I'm like, okay, I, I can do that. So, th and that's the thing, too, I want you all to understand is I'm not going to tell you about something that I haven't used. I, w I wouldn't do that. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be kosher. So, um, I'm going to always tell you what I think, and if I've used it and it's, and it's really good, then I'm going to tell you about it. And if I've used it and it's not really good, you're never going to see it in my carousel. <laughs> you're never going to see me talk about it, because then I would have to say not good stuff. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to talk about good stuff all the time, okay? Okay. All right, so back to the overhead camera. Let's look at these paint pens. I have to tell you guys, I, I was, I was kind of, you know, skeptical. I'm like, am I going to like these? And then I started using them. I'm like, OMG, do I love these? Yes, I do. So let's come out a little bit so you can see this page. Now I've got the, I think the medium, are these the medium ones that are in your um, carousel? I've got the medium ones here and I've also got the fine point. I'm going to pull out the fine point. Actually, I'm going to talk about the fine point first because here's why. So um, I don't know about you guys, but if I get a product that is too hard to deal with, like it's too hard to put the lid back on, it's too hard to hang it up in the closet, it's too hard to turn it on and off, I don't want to be bothered. I mean, it has to be functional, you know? If it's pretty and functional, then it's like twice as good. So here's the thing about this, these fine tip markers. And it may seem like a little thing until you've been painting for a gazillion years and you've had to put stuff back in boxes over and over and over and, and they don't fit and it's fussy and fiddly and you're like, I'm throwing these out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw them out. This box, when this box came, I have to tell you, the, the way that the, they designed the box, just the box, now I haven't even gotten to the markers yet. The way they designed the box was a big hit for me, and here's why. Once you slide it open, first of all, they send you a couple of extra nibs. Bam, that's just like a little thank you, okay? And then they send you a QR code that you can look at this QR code with your phone and get an ebook with ideas in it. More good stuff there, okay? And then where you can find them on social media, okay? All this stuff is kind of like, yeah, okay, that's great too, so it's so big deal. However, you know what the big deal is? Look at these markers right here. They can go in here anyway. They can go all the same way. They can go alternative like that. There are no fiddly dividers. There are no fiddly dividers in here. I'm just done. I'm done and they're done and they're packed and I slide them back and they go in the bookcase and I'm done. I can't tell you guys. I know you may think I'm crazy, but it's a big deal. It's a very big deal when, it, when stuff works like that, you know? So the other thing I like is that you can see the, the care that they put into the packaging. It's creative, it's fun, there's lots of information on there. 
I got to say, guys, I, I think it's a hit. Now, <laughs> I've talked about the box and everything else. Now, let's talk about the markers themselves, okay? The markers themselves are juicy good, and they work. What else do you need to know? They're good, and they work. Um, I think that about covers it. <laughs> right on the barrel and and you know they're well designed they're pretty they've got lovely decoration on them right on the barrel it tells you um, to shake push paint and recap so when you first get them you want to shake them a little bit give them a little shake shake right put a little put a little shake music on should I put some shake music on let me see do I have shake music how's this shake music is it playing shake 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 okay <laughs> all right so shake them up a little bit and then prime them these have already been primed of course because I've been using them just prime them takes a few seconds and then look oh my goodness we like it don't we yeah we like it look at that I'm loving this and you know what else I love can I tell you what else I love these do not drip. That may not seem like a big deal until you have put one of these in your purse or your backpack or your weekend suitcase and you open it and there's red paint everywhere on everything you own. I'm telling you, <laughs> that is a big deal, you all. These do not leak. They don't leak and they don't dry out. What more do you need to know? They come in a bunch of different colors. And also, ooh, also, I have a discount code for you. Okay, so I'm going to put this in all the chat boxes. So give me a minute. I'm going to put it in the Facebook chat box. This is what you want to put when you get when you um, get these pens. Ooh, acrylic Diva. Just use Acrylic Diva, all caps and where are we on YouTube go right here acrylic diva all caps that is your uh, coupon code just use that and you'll get extra um, savings I believe it's 10% off you get in addition to if there are any other coupons there so there you go that'll get you some fun stuff but I mean, honestly, look at this is just such a sweet little set. This is the 15 color set. And we'll look at that on the Amazon page here. And before I forget, did I forget to put it in chat for you guys on Amazon? Okay, let's do let's do that for Amazon too. Acrylic Diva. Can I spell? <laughs> okay. It's all one word, Acrylic Diva, all caps, all one word. That's your discount code. Let's take a look at these on the Amazon page. Right here. There we go. This is the fine tip, uh, 11 assorted colors and four pastels. And you know, if you go to the Artistro store on Inside Amazon, just click on that at the top of the Amazon page there. Click on the Artistro store and you can see all the cool stuff that they have. They've got a bunch of fun stuff. Gold paint pens and wood chips that, you know, um, I wanted to show you guys. Let me see if I can find. Oh, here they are right here. They, they have these wood slices. And so you can draw on them, paint on them with the paint pens. And they're ornaments. You can hang them right on the tree. Pretty easy. Wouldn't that be a great um, project to do with kids, you know, or family at Thanksgiving instead of everybody watching football? What if everybody made ornaments? That's a good idea, right? Um, so there you go. Okay. Questions. Anybody have questions? I'm going to pop into the um, chat boxes here. I've got, and actually, you know, this is my first time doing a multiple platform stream. And I believe I can actually see all of the, all of the um, chat at one time, but I'm not that clever yet. So <laughs> I'll have to go back and forth for the time being. All right. Um, looks like we're doing okay. I don't see anybody who's, you know, 
needs needs help too too much. If you do, of course, if you do have questions, of course, let me know, and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, now I want to do some live painting with you. <laughs> live, I'm going to be alive here. Um, let's do a little bit on the Strathmore artist tiles. I love these babies. They're perfect size for the little um, Golden State frames that I showed you there. They're the perfect size for that. And, um, okay, looks like we're doing good. I also, before I forget, I want to talk to you about this Princeton brush that I'm going to, that I'm going to use. Um, where'd it go? Where is it? Where are you? Princeton brush, there it is. Okay, so this Princeton brush um, that I'm showing you here, this is the Aqua Elite. This is a, a size 12 round. These are amazing brushes. And you know what? They are animal friendly. They are, there is no real Kalinsky on this, in, in this uh, brush. It's a synthetic hair. And honestly, it feels so much like Kalinsky, the sable. It's really hard to tell the difference. And honestly, it's, it's um, about a tenth the price of a, of a Kalinsky brush. I mean, come on. So I like the fact that it's animal friendly. I really do. And the, th the other thing that's cool about these brushes is they hold a ton of water. So um, where's my little watercolor set? So here's my core watercolor here. I'm gonna load my brush with water. Come in here to my quinacridone magenta and look at that. Look at the amount of water. Look at the shape. Just the flow is really good. It holds a lot of water. But now look at that point too. You see that point? It comes right back to a point so you can do detail work. Look at that. You can do really nice detail work. It's a beautiful brush. It is a really beautiful brush. So that's the um, Princeton Aqua Elite. That's a size 12. I have the size 12 and I have a size 8 here. Comes in a bunch of different sizes, of course. Let's put some purple out here. This is the size 8. Look at that. Ooh, that's a nice brush. That is a really nice brush. Yeah, so there you go. Those are the, um, the Aqua Elite Animal Friendly. Yeah, no, no Kolinskis were harmed in the making of this brush. That's kind of cool, right? It's also kind of cool that it costs about a tenth the price of a sable brush. So there you go. You know, I bought a sable brush years ago, and I was always terrified to use it. I mean, it just sat in on the on the table, and I never used it because I was terrified that I would ruin it. You know, so these are so affordable; you can use them. You don't have to be completely freaked out by the idea that you're, you know, using a a Kalinsky brush. Um, let's do a little watercolor painting while I'm at it. Okay, I'm going to do a little wet in wet, and um, let's do a little tiny landscape. What do you say? Let's do a little tiny landscape. So we'll start up here with a little water. You probably can't see that on the camera. And let's have a little sunset thing happening up here. Get a little sunset action, right? These, these pigments are so beautiful. This is that cadmium primrose. Oh, I love that, so pretty. Let's grab a little of that um, pyro orange. Just push it right into that cad primrose right there. Grab a little quin magenta. You know I had to have some of that. And these pigments are really strong, so pay attention to that when you're working with them. You know, you're going to need less than you think you do. So now I'm just going to feather this in up here like that. Start to blend those, blend them down here like so. 
And let's have a little land something happening here. So I'm going to go over here to the um, transparent iron oxide. Get a little Mesa action happening here. A little New Mexico desert thingy majiggy. I miss New Mexico, you guys. I've been really missing it. I haven't been able to go in a couple of years because, well, you guys know why. You know, no flying and stuff like that. I'm missing it. My son lives in Albuquerque, and I'm way missing it. I need to go. Um, let's have a little dark green in the foreground, you know. Get a little green action going here. Just building a little landscape type thingy. Let's have some landscape painting music. There. Just a little turkey vulture action happening there. And then maybe some, um, I don't know, growing things. You know, tree-like stuff, little tiny tree things on top of the mesas. I probably don't want to put any there because then I want those to be kind of distant. And then even though this is purple, it'll read dark. It'll read like it's dark. And that, I'm going to stop the music because I don't know what that is. It was kind of odd, odd music. So I'm just making little growing type things there. And actually, I'm going to come back with my paintbrush. If those are, if those are not dry yet, that's actually all right. I can kind of fuzz them out a little bit. Let's get a little sap green and I'm at kind of a dry brush here. Yeah, let's help those out because they need to be more like a tree thing. Give a little, couple of little tree things there too. Just some growing stuff. I made that a little blobby, but oh well, it, it's fine for now. Um, foreground stuff, let's have some, we can have some yucca thingamajiggies. What do they call those? Chamisa? yucca plants. They're all over the desert. Sage, you know, lots of that kind of stuff. And you can see this, this paintbrush comes back to a really nice point. So I get some really nice um, detail, you know. I can get a nice point. And I think that is just huge, right? Let's have a little Payne's Gray here, a little darker stuff here. And these, I think I'm just, I'm going to fuss with this up here because I'm not happy with it. <laughs> I'm going to fuss with it a little bit. I got carried away with my forest over there. <laughs> oh well, it wouldn't be the first time. Okay, a couple of little things here. Right. So we're just a little tiny, uh, you know, little tiny desert scene. Let's give a little Quinn magenta here. Now if I wanted those to really pop, I would add a little Chinese white in to make them opaque, but they're fine just the way they are. Just pop those babies right in there. There we go. Little tiny landscape, little tiny desert landscape. I'm missing, I'm missing New Mexico. Can you tell? Hi Evans family. Hey. Where have you been? <laughs> We're just about getting ready to wrap it up here. Um, it's almost time for me to go get lunch. Did I forget anything? Let's see. Oh, you know what? Oh, I forgot. I wanted to talk about David Hockney's book. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rave on and on about this. And you guys are probably going to go, okay, crazy lady. I, I got to tell you, though, <laughs> I've got it highlighted in your carousel. And if you're on Facebook or YouTube with me, just hop over to AcrylicDiva.live and you can take a look at the, um, you can take a look at the David Hockney book. Um, it is amazing. I love this book. So, you know, he was locked down during the pandemic. He's 80, ooh, what is he, 85? Is he 85, you guys? Um, anyway, he's not a spring chicken anymore, so he couldn't be jumping around all over the place. Um, however, 
This is such a wonderful book, and it's filled with his artwork. It's filled with his artwork. It also is very conversational. It actually, um, it's very easy to read. It's not full of a bunch of, of um, art jargon. It's just him talking about his working process and how, you know, what he was doing during the whole pandemic lockdown. He was in the um, uh, uh, Normandy, in, in, in France. He was in Normandy. He had a, a I, I, I guess you'd call it a, a farm. Well, it's probably not a working farm, but I think it was four or five acres. And uh, he went and ended up staying there and you know, he had this conversation with Martin Gayford, who's an old friend of his and also an art historian and an art writer. And so it was just really a charming, charming book, very easy to read, very readable. And I just, I can't tell you how much I liked it. Look at the double, double spread there. He, he, now there's a lot of artwork in here. Um, some of it is actual quote-unquote traditional art like oil and acrylic and drawing and things like that and then some of it is iPad art because er, he's doing a lot of iPad art so I love that about him and you know I'm looking at this this picture right here and I'm, I'm not quite sure if that's on the iPad or if that's pen and ink I can't tell so there's a there's a um, reference in the back so that you can tell all the illustrations. Okay, that's page 77. So page 77 is is ink on paper. Okay, that is ink on paper. I really, I honestly couldn't tell. So, you know, it's just wonderful, wonderful. I can't tell you how much I loved it. I'm ready to read it again. And um, so there you go. That's a little bit about the uh, David Hockney um, Spring Cannot Be Cancelled. I just thought that was it was really charming that he um, you know he was talking it was it's it was um, inspirational and motivational you know so there you go I thought you'd like that and then the other book that I'm going to talk about actually two books by the same author Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work Austin Cleon is a genius okay can I just tell you that I think he's a genius um, I think it that he's just a wonderful well I met him at a book signing and so I got to say that he is just a really neat guy super friendly and um, if you are an artist and you are or you want to be an artist and you kind of suffer from what people call imposter syndrome you know, we just like, oh, I'm not really an artist because I didn't go to school for 12 years or I haven't had a gallery show or 19 other things that you can tell yourself that don't really mean anything, okay? Um, this is the book for you. This is the book that's going to empower you. It's going to blow open your creativity. You're going to love it. It's full of wonderful sayings. It's also full of practical information. Um, it, it just works, okay? It just works. And if you have an artist in your family or someone who's dabbling, quote unquote dabbling, give it as a present. It, you know what? It's a wonderful present. In fact, this one is also by him. And this is all about showing your work and being practical about it, not waiting for a big gallery show or waiting to be discovered or anything else. Just getting your work out there, cafes, real estate offices, the dentist office, your mom's hallway, whatever it is. You know, show your works, share the wealth. And uh, if you're gonna share your creativity, I personally think that's like really good because we need more good juicy stuff like that, okay? So those are the two Austin Cleon books. Love them both. He's got a set. You can get them as a set. You can give them as a gift. And they're a nice size. They're perfect. You can put it in your purse or your backpack. It doesn't take up a ton of space. It's an easy read, but it's the kind of read 
that you're going to go back to. And um, it's a New York Times bestseller for a reason. Okay, it's been around for a while. Um, but I just thought I would, you know, pump it up again and let you guys know. He's a really nice guy. He's smart. I think he might be a genius. Okay. Um, so there you go. That's Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work. Austin Cleon. What a guy. Okay. Okay. I think, um, oh, well, you know what? Do I have, did I cover everything? Oh, I did. Evans, you just got home. You were running around crazy like. Is that why you just popped into the live stream? You just got home, huh? All right. So we've done a little bit of everything today, but um, I, w I wanted to just wrap it up by saying that we've got the watercolor thing covered. You've got the Pigma Micron pens covered. Um, you've got the book to inspire you. I mean, what else do y'all need? <laughs> So get out there and make that creative stuff. Keep your creativity alive and well because we need to see it. The world needs it. And, you know, don't get caught in the idea that you got to have some kind of, you know, a degree or you have to go to school or anything like that. You're creative. You can do this. Okay? Okay. That's my little soapbox for the day. Um, <laughs> I'm going to double check the chat boxes and see if we have any questions, if anybody's, looks like we're good, okay, I think we're good, all right, excellent, all right, well then I will say goodbye for now, I'll see you back at 410 this afternoon, same channel, and um, 410 Pacific, and this afternoon we do digital. So it's going to be all about the iPad. I am going to give you the scoop on that. We'll do some fun Procreate stuff. We're going to talk about the 5.2 update as well. Okay? All right. Check back with me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12.10 and 4.10 Pacific. And I will see you then. And like I said, keep making that good stuff because we need to see your magic. All right? Thanks for joining me. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.